Okay, you just cloned your repository. Now it's time to go to the start of the tutorial. When you clone this repository, it's going to check out the master branch by default. The master branch is going to be way at the top. It's going to be on one of the most recent commits. All right, to begin this tutorial, you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you need to reset the master branch to one of these early commits. Now, let's say I'm starting this tutorial and I want to start at um, the parts of an audio plugin, right? I will probably write some message in the email which says, hey, this is the commit you should actually start on and include a screenshot or something. You know, each of these tutorials is going to be different. So I'm trying to keep this generic for the purpose of this video. Okay, let's say I want to work on this first chunk of the, tutor of the tutorial, the parts of an audio plugin. I'm going to go to the commit right before this branch and I'm going to right click and I'm going to reset master to here. I'm going to discard all local changes. Now I'm going to right click on the parts of an audio plugin and choose cherry pick commit. This is going to take all of the changes that happened on this commit and apply them on top of the code base as it exists at this point of the master branch. Now I don't want to commit those changes, I just want them to be added. Okay, so I'm going to click that. And now if I actually look here in local changes, you can see here's the changes that happened. Um, same for plugin processor.h, here's all the code that was added. Now, how is this um, useful for us? In Visual Studio, if we take a look at the project, um, it's not going to be too helpful because we won't be able to tell what code has been added. However, if you go to the Visual Studio Marketplace and add the git diff margin plugin, which is free, I will include a link to this for Visual Studio people, um, it's going to be very helpful. You will get an extremely similar experience to those people using Xcode. So let's take a look at this right now. Okay, All right, we have cherry picked the branch that we want to look at. Now I'm going to choose open in file explorer and I'm going to open up the juicer file. Now depending on when I created this tutorial, the juicer file may or may not have an export target for your particular operating system. So just click this plus button, choose the export target that you need, and then uh, under selected exporter, choose um, the one that you, that you need. All right, then click save and open. This is going to open it in, in this case, Visual Studio. I'll show this in Xcode in uh, just a minute. Okay, if you install this plugin right here, what you will see on the left, you're going to see this bar right here, which shows you changes in the code. This is extremely handy. Okay. It's extremely handy because we get to see, you know, what are all the, what was added, if we go back here, go back to fork, what was added in this commit, right? It says step one through four, but what actually changed? This bar will show us what changed, okay? This is very similar to what happens in Xcode. Let's go back and look at this. Okay, this says there are four steps in this particular part of the tutorial. How can we find those steps in Visual Studio and in Xcode? In Visual Studio, we can go to the Edit menu, we can go to Find and Replace, Find in Files, and now we want to look in the actual repository source directory. Okay, so navigate to the, navigate to the project, and then open up the source file and choose Select Folder. Now you're going to search for STEP underscore in um, all caps, and you're going to want to match that case. All right, now if you choose find all, down here it's going to find the four steps, and you can just click on step one and start reading through it. I'm going to recommend that you turn on word wrap, okay? That's going to be helpful, and you might want to shrink your window width as well. All right, some of these steps have a lot of text, some of them are very short in text and don't have much in the way of code. Let's advance to further in the tutorial so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, let's go back to fork. Let's go way up here. Um, let's go to the add juice sliders. Let's see, where did that go? That's right here. All right, so we're going to right click on this. We're going to reset master from here. We're going to discard all of our changes. All right, 
Now we're going to cherry pick add juice sliders. Cherry pick commit. Do not commit the changes. Submit. All right. Now we can go back to Visual Studio. And now we can search for this. Repeat find. There we go. Click that repeat find button. Find all. All right. Here are our eight steps. If we take a look at the fork um, at the Git repository, it shows there are steps one through eight. Now we can go back here and we can just start on step one. And now we can see our control. We can see our instructions. Now we can see that this git diff margin plugin for Visual Studio is showing us the code changes. So it shows us that a constructor was added here. And then it shows us that a resized function was added and then the sliders themselves. Okay, so that's handy because if you don't have that plugin turned on, my experience is that Visual Studio is not showing me what these changes are. It's just showing me um, the code and it's not showing me what actually changed between this, uh, between when um, this commit was made and then this stuff was added, which is kind of annoying. Okay, before I show what this looks like in Xcode, let me show you how you complete a step. Okay, so the process is very simple. Let's say I finished coding up my juice sliders in my own project. The next thing to do is to just go to the next, um, just navigate to the next branch and then check out the commit before it, reset the master branch here, you know, discard your changes, and then cherry pick this guy right here. And don't commit the changes. Okay. Now I can do my search again, repeat the find, find all. And if I go back to this, I can see that it's steps one through four. And now I can continue on with reading this. All right, so declare a rotary slider class and inherit from juice slider. Let me go over to my project. I'm gonna type all that stuff in. All right, now let me go to step two. All right, initialize the base class with a rotary style and no text box. All right, if I click on this bar, it shows me what used to be there and what is there now. Right, and I can also show the difference this way. Click on this. Let's see, can I jump to the next diff? Where is the diff? All right, here we go. This is what was added. Here's where the change was made. Okay, and then there's more text here. Run and test. Okay, let's add attachments next. Again, I recommend that you turn on word wrap. Advanced word wrap. This is going to help you when um, the lines extend. Okay, let me demonstrate what this looks like um, for you Xcode users. Okay, for Mac users, the experience is going to be basically the same. You're going to right click on a commit before a branch. You're going to reset the master branch to there. So for example, let's do the draw crossovers branch, right? I'm going to right click on removed steps, reset master to here. I'm going to discard all the changes. And I'm going to right click on draw crossovers and cherry pick this commit. I'm going to not commit to the changes. Now, if um, there's a point in the tutorial where I am adding source files, I'm going to need to go to Finder. I'm going to need to go to the tutorial juicer file. And I'm going to need to um, reload from disk. Wow, why does that look like that? Okay, I'm going to need to reload from disk in case source files had been added. Okay, once I do that, then I can save and reopen. Okay, so when you're looking at the tutorial, it's important to note that you keep an eye on the changes and see what actually happened. For instance, you can look at the file tree, and if you see that there's a lot more source files than you actually have, then you probably need to go to Producer and save and reopen, okay? Again, go to Producer. It's gonna prompt you, do you want to reload this from disk? And you're gonna click yes, reload from disk. And then you're gonna save and reopen in the ID. This is the same for Windows and Mac users. Okay, once it is open here and you have applied all those changes, search for step just like the Windows users and you'll see all of the steps. Let's go to step number one. Like I was saying, for Windows users that use that plugin, Xcode does that automatically. We get this blue line which shows us what was added. And then we can just start working our way through the instructions. 
All right, here's step one. Let's draw our crossover next. To accomplish this, all we need to do is get the frequency value from the crossover parameter, map it to an X position on the screen, and draw a vertical line. All right, that seems logical. Timer callback is taking care of repainting, so we don't need to do anything special when the sliders are dragged, which actually updates the parameters. Um, which is cool. We don't need to implement slider listener or anything like that or a parameter listener or anything like that. Cool. All right. Take me to step number two. All right. Let's declare a function. All right. Cool. Then what, then what do we do? All right. Let's implement it. We're going to call it and then implement it next. Okay. Step four. All right. I'm going to put this right below there. And here's all my text. Okay. So that's the process for getting through this tutorial. And let's go back to Windows. All right, so if you have any questions about this, about this um, process or the tutorial itself, message me in Slack, and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able to. Outside of that, thank you for checking out this tutorial, and um, I appreciate your support. Again, uh, you know, if you run into trouble, just message me in Slack. All right, see you in the next video. Good luck on your tutorial.